Hey gorgeous, we are back today and today we're talking about your manifestations and the evil eye. So a lot of times I get asked questions about the evil eye. I did a whole training on this, which I will link in the description box, but someone specifically asked, when should you share your manifestations? Should you share your manifestations? And I have two guidelines for this and then a third tip with you, okay, for you. Number one is in my culture, it is believed that when something is in its infancy, it's new, that's when it's more likely to have the evil eye because the thing is, it's new, right? It's not really solid yet. That's why pregnancies are typically hidden until three, four, five months until, you know, it's a little bit of time has passed. Engagements is a big one that in my culture, you know, they, they, they won't necessarily share that until, you know, things have progressed. So this is a really good guideline for you is that when something is new, when you're just manifesting it, when it's, it's like a baby idea in your consciousness, time has not passed, maybe that is not the right time to share it with everyone. Of course, you can keep it with your smaller inner circle, but it's not something that I personally would be sharing with everyone when something's new. The second guideline is a more important guideline for me. And this is something that I really look at. And this is how robust do I feel with this thing inside of me? So regardless of how much time has passed, how do I feel internally about this thing? So for example, let's say that I'm manifesting something big. And I'm in that stage where I'm still having to kind of journal on it. I'm still like doing affirmations. I'm still trying to normalize it. I'm working through my core beliefs. Yeah, I'm not going to be really solid in that right now. I'm not really like robust. It's not something I've like, you know, it's like, oh, I've normalized that. That's not when I'm going to share that thing for many reasons. One, the evil eye, the energetics of that. And secondly, I feel like when I'm still working on my own beliefs around something, I don't want to double up on someone else's limiting beliefs because even well-meaning family and friends, they have limiting beliefs. We all have limiting beliefs, right? And if they have fear for us, if they're worried about us because they haven't activated their own power and they're projecting that onto you, well, they're going to say a lot of things that might make you even more wobbly when this is not something that you have fully owned yet. That's why you're still doing inner work on that. So when I'm not fully like solid in something, I try not to share. Even sometimes with close family and friends, if they're the type of people that tend to worry a lot, then they, I don't need that worry when I'm still trying to work on something, okay? So those are like my two main guidelines. Now, I understand that as humans, like when we have a new idea, we're working on something, we get so excited and it's so fun to share. So here is where I do share. I have a very small, tight circle of friends that are also entrepreneurs. They're very driven like me and they also believe in having all the things. They want the house, they want the relationship, they want the body, the wardrobe, the money. They're like me. And these are women that are always working on themselves and they're also always manifesting big, huge things in their life. Like they just have a big vision. Those are women that I share with. Even if I'm wobbly, I can share with them because they will actually, you know, uh, project or show me or mirror back my own power, right? They see me as a powerful woman. So when I'm having a wobbly moment, in fact, they're going to lift me back up and show me and remind me who I am. So in the, in with those friendships, I say it's okay to share. Now, I understand that that is very rare. It took me four decades to manifest that in my own life. So I know that sometimes we're in a transition period, but if you are in the transition period where you don't really have those soul aligned friends yet, I would say journal, share with people that, you know, you can tell who has the evil eye and who doesn't. Like I can just tell I'm very intuitive and I know the people that follow me are very intuitive. So there might be still some people that you can share it with, even if they don't have the same goals. Another thing these days is obviously finding your temporary tribe online until you find your actual tribe. And so this would be in places where people are like-minded, where they are doing and creating big things. They have big goals for themselves. They see themselves as powerful. This is important. People who see themselves as powerful, see you as powerful. 
People who don't see themselves as powerful see you as powerless as well. So one really interesting and amazing way to gauge if someone's going to be able to hold your vision without giving you the evil eye is are they people that see themselves as fully, fully capable and fully powerful? That is going to be a very great kind of gauge to see if they can hold you. So I hope that this helps you. If you want more of my tips on the evil eye and people that monitor your um, successes and all of your things and you know, pe like typically people like this, we want to be careful with and we want to put things in place where we're not sharing too much of things that we're not solid in. I have a full training on that that I will link in the description box. Also, if you haven't already, you need my wealth activation audio and my cord cutting. Cord cutting can be so powerful in at least from our point, removing any cords that we might have developed with these people where we feel like they're energetically kind of, you know, have their paws on us or their eyes on us or like trying to suck energy. So this is all really powerful spiritual practices that you can do. So I will link my uh, free activation audio that instantly gives you my container workbook, the cord cutting. It also gives you my free masterclass called Resourceful source as the main word in there because we are not trying to push ourselves through willpower we're trying to plug into source and make our life more effortless while also being high achieving driven women so i love you if you're new here subscribe and i'll see you in the next one let me know your key takeaway and if you believe in moving in silence if you share your manifestations when do you share them all of that should be in the comments and i will reply i can't wait to connect with you bye